Suspension of Judgment by Joseph Ally, January 16th, 2018. If you would like to read more posts like this and countless testimonials of the law working, please go to my website at SovereignMind.com. Often when listening to Neville, he repeats the same thing over and over again and abbreviates key terms so as to be able to use them quickly and to reinforce the main ideas. Imagination creates reality, and so to say how to do it every time in great detail is not something that he always did. In fact, I have realized that regardless of the hundreds of lectures I've listened to, books I've read, etc., there are some books which go into very specific detail about certain things, and then they are only referenced in other books. There are a few key ideas involved with using your imagination to create reality. These include 1. Ignoring your senses, 2. Suspending your judgment, 3. Imagining the desire's end, and 4. Feeling the feeling of that scene in its fullness. One of the things commonly disregarded or not taken note of is suspending your judgment. Neville mentions this key phrase over and over and in the past I had not given it much attention. It's easy to imagine the end, and to do so there must be temporary suspension of judgment to an extent in order to feel like you're already in the place you want to be, doing the thing you want to be doing, as the person you want to be. A big part of assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled is actually being able to suspend this judgment of current situations and circumstances. Aside from simply imaginal acts, suspending judgment is useful in perpetuating or further planting seeds regarding your manifestations, or to provide a healthy life for them to provide fruit. Suspending your judgment means to refrain from making conclusions based on evidence. In this case, we're talking about suspending your judgment on things of the senses or of this physical world. Our senses live in this sensory world, as well as our logic and our ego. Our mind constantly creates connections and judgments, whether it be about people, projecting future events, concluding what is going to happen, or any judgment which allows you to firmly decide why, what, how, or what next. To the proportion we can suspend our judgment do we have complete dominion over the world we live in because we are no longer reacting to the world of shadows. The events, people, places, and things which happen in this world have no causation of the physical world. Anything that exists right now has first been imagined. There is nothing at all that can take place in this world, no action, speech, person, place, thing, etc., which was not first imagined. Every moment was first inspired by the imagination. A spiritual sensation is the cause of all the phenomena that exist now, has existed in the past, and will ever exist. We are the ones who through thought manifested everything we have ever been through in our lives. Once we have manifested the events in our life, since we were asleep most of our lives, we became ignorant to the fact that we first created it in our mind. Our senses and common sense tell us that some physical thing, person, or event has been created or put into action by something other than our mind. Because of this delusion, we end up fighting against our creations. We are then stuck in a loop. We first create, second forget that we've created, third fight our creations. We are constantly creating, so we are constantly entering this loop over and over, not knowing what we are doing. Literally, until we wake up, we will do this over and over again until we die, constantly fighting our creations, asleep. You see, each thought manifests an action in reality. Your imaginal acts not only dictate your actions, but they dictate the actions of everyone else. They dictate events, stock prices, job hirings, firings, relationships, catastrophic events, happy events, sad events, events that don't matter. When you manifest something, which you do, indeed, every single day, you then either forget you manifested it, so react to it, or you remember you manifested it, but still react to it. Ceasing to react goes hand in hand with ceasing to judge. If you do not begin to suspend your judgment, 
you will struggle to rise out of the state you are in. As I said earlier, in other words, to the proportion to which you can suspend your judgment is the degree and rapidness to which you can change states. The more you understand and believe that every single thought is creating reality, and that all of your imaginal acts must be manifested, the more you will have faith in the fact that, by not reacting and by holding to an idea, you are destroying the state you are not reacting to. Less than a year ago, I was presented with a situation at work. One of my co-workers was unpleasant to be around and was actually threatening my position at work. I decided that I would hold him in a state by changing the idea of him and myself. Things began to change. He began to change. And at times, things got extremely difficult. At first, I knew exactly what was happening because I was the one who had set it in motion. But after a while, once my memory of the imaginal scene faded, I started to forget that I had imagined him in a specific way. The plot is not our business, only the end result. So I had imagined him as more pleasant, but whatever it took for him to get there was none of my business. And through that time period, things got thick, but they were indeed changing. He and I would argue and I would get offended and vent to my other mystic friends about it. But they reminded me that I had held him in a state, and now he must fulfill that state. I was fighting against my creation, in essence, and the length of time I fight against my creation, I am keeping himself and myself in that state. Eventually, I came to my senses, and remembered fully that I had held him in a state, and the reason he was changing was because of my imaginal work. Once I realized that, I was able to stand off and remove myself from getting into the cycle or circular loop of holding himself and myself there. As soon as I let up, the next time he began to try to argue, I seized. And that was the last time he did it. He had changed, and for the better. When we battle with our creations, it's like fighting a mirror. We only manifest ourselves over and over. And so if we are fighting our manifestations, we are fighting ourselves. Picture the life you live as a circle that goes round and round. We constantly are aiming to elevate. But when we do not elevate ourselves past specific events, we will not spiral up, but we will circle round and round and round. Suspending your judgment is another way of knowing that you have created everything and everyone. If you have set something into motion, you will see it come to pass. The more you can separate yourself from emotional investment of the in-between stages of manifestation, the faster it will come and the easier it will come. If you imagine something and you know you have done it right, then no matter what comes ahead, whether it be the opposite of what you desired or a sign of it, it has been fixed by God and nothing can stop it. Realizing that will allow you to cease worrying about the things that stare you in the face on the road to manifestation. You will be presented with evidence that is contrary to what you want to manifest at times. The evidence in this physical world is always screaming limitations in your face. Your ego is telling you, you can't do this, or it doesn't make sense. It's trying to tell you, because it's trained by the physical, carnal world, that the only options you have are what is in front of you. It's giving you suggestions and trying to have you make conclusions based on the five senses, or your strength, or through logic. One great example of when your judgment is not suspended is when you are attempting to manifest something. Oftentimes, when I talk to someone about manifesting and teach them how to do it, they will often say, well, how is it going to work? Oftentimes, there are so many obstacles that a person is used to in their life that they are thinking about it carnally. Say, for example, that you want to take a trip, but you have absolutely no money. If you told someone who is new at these teachings, simply imagine the end and all things will conspire to aid your harvesting, that person, being rooted in the carnal mind of Caesar, would say, but how will it happen? The carnal mind is trying constantly to take what it sees in this 3D world and use those things to tell you your limits. This is judgment. Judgment is saying, I won't be able to do that because I don't have any money, or he will never hire me because I don't have my degree, or 
he won't talk to me because I'm not good enough, or because I did this, I cannot do that. There are infinite excuses that the ego or the carnal mind comes up with in order to impose limits on your mind. Any bit of facts, truth, logic, common sense, reasons, why, how, are of the carnal world and they are worthless. Anything we can explain based on the carnal world or the physical world are not rooted in spirit. Anything not rooted in spirit is actually trumped when any spiritual sensation is felt. Think of any reason, explanation, or why, or how, as ideas that live on the shadow of the world, or the byproduct of imagination. They are used by people who do not understand the spiritual cause of all things. Non-spiritual explanations are given by non-believers after something is made manifest, and they only trace the pattern that has emerged of the shadow. They only give a mathematical equation, a map, explaining what has already happened. Those types of explanations cannot actually explain how something happened, nor predict the future, nor are they indications of possibilities of the future. If you begin to try to explain why something has happened, or why something will or will not happen, you are creating limitations for yourself, based on evidence of this 3D world, but they literally are of no use. Our minds have so adapted to this reality that we are used to explaining things through the carnal mind. We do, after all, live in the carnal world. Try to consider that the entire world is a play and your imagination is the person who wrote the script. Before you were awake, you were writing the script while asleep. There is a delay between the time you wrote the play and the time the actors actually play the part. Because of this delay, you never figured this out. The people are playing the parts, and it seems so real. So for a very long time, you just played another part in the play, while secretly, behind the scenes, you were the director of the whole thing. Whatever ideas you had about specific people, institutions, places, events, etc. had become manifest in this world. Your own body is an actor in this play. You are constantly trying to rearrange the lights, the ballet, the scenery, and the rest of the players in your own way. If only your arrangements would stay put, if only people would do as you wished, the show would be great. Everyone including yourself would be pleased. The reason this is not working is because you are trying to arrange the play with your ego. You are trying to move things with your body. To change the play, to arrange the lights and the actors in it, all you have to do is use your imagination. Your imagination rules everything. It controls how you move. It controls what everyone else is doing. It controls the events in this world. Everything is operating from your subconscious mind or your imagination. So like I said, in order to change the play so it suits your desires, you must simply change the input of your thoughts. Since everything is running off of your thoughts, and nothing can be changed by your willpower or physical reality, just imagine the things you want to see in this reality and they will begin to take place in your life. There will be a slight time delay at times, but the more you do this, and the more often you do this, and the more effort you put into this, the greater the change that will appear in the world. Sooner than later, you will start to see the world shaped exactly like your thoughts. When you control all of your thoughts, they will marshal together and form the reality you live in. You will see everyone moving in the way you desire them to. You will receive the things you want to receive. You will begin to act the way you see yourself act. Nothing can have long-lasting change unless it is done in your imagination first. No willpower can make anyone do anything for long. It will all be temporary. But when you use your imagination, the effects will be long-lasting and permanent. You will not have to lift a finger. In fact, lifting your finger is fruitless. Your imagination will move your finger automatically for you. Fortunately, the mystic mind trumps all things. Something else is at work behind the 3D world. The 3D world is only a shadow of God. It only lives because the God in you makes it alive. Instead of judging what can and cannot be done based on the 3D world in front of you, 
or on the senses, or on your history, or what statistics you read, or the future. Instead, base your judgments on this. 1. There is nothing impossible at all to the God that lives within and is operated by your imagination. 2. There is nothing in between you and your goal. Nothing. 3. The only requirement to obtaining your desire is to simply imagine the successful end of your desire, the fulfilled wish, and feel as if it were real. 4. Anything appearing to be against you is only created in the first place from your imagination, so realizing that everything is made from you will give you the knowledge to stop struggling against your creations. Simply fix your imagination to the wanted end, and all things will conform to that end. 5. As soon as you suspend judgment, you can have anything you want. 6. No statistics, or any senses, or logic, or history, or prediction has any weight in determining your futures. You have complete freedom from odds or statistics. Suspend your judgment, for in doing this you can have whatever you want, whenever you want. Never wonder how this will happen. Never think that something is difficult or impossible. If you persist in suspending your judgments, you will begin to manifest at an incredible rate, for there will be no limitations to you, as there are no limitations to God. Soon you will only remember your imagination at work, so all the things of the past, your history in the sensory 3D world, will start to vanish. When this happens, you can fully separate yourself from this world of shadows, this world of senses, and realize that the operant power within you is the one running the show. No one in this world can do anything to you that you didn't imagine first. All people are only animated through your imagination, fueled through your emotion, and tell you what you actually want to hear. They can do nothing that you have not first imagined. Imagine the end, and just go for the ride. For once, the imagination was used, your body becomes automatic. The only thing you can always control is your thoughts. Also, everyone else will operate under your assumptions as well. This is the great fact of life, the only fact, that your suspension of judgment and the controlled use of your imagination will explicitly dictate your future.